Hi, I'm the MP with the Centre Parting. Ask me anything. I'm Louis Ng, 42 this year, and I'm the MP for Nisun East. Now this, this Centre Parting has been here for decades actually. Um, I think I just showed recently a photo on Facebook of my bus pass when I was in NUS. So it's been that long, over two decades now. Probably even more. I, I really don't know what inspired it. I cannot remember now, I'm getting too old. Um, a cleaner, a town council cleaner, a coffee shop cleaner, a kindergarten teacher, a healthcare worker, a grab driver, um, a chambermaid. And all those really gave me a sense of what's happening on the ground, really walk in their shoes, and then be able to raise these issues in Parliament. This fight on smoking here in Singapore, this battle to try and curb smoking rates to really protect people from secondhand smoke, started quite a few years ago. And I've been sharing the, my story of how I was a smoker for 17 years and I quit. And then I recently I've been pushing for how we can try and protect you from secondhand smoke in your own homes. You know, we do so much to protect you from secondhand smoke in the public areas, but I think too little to protect you from secondhand smoke in your own homes where you spend so much of your time at and where you really have just nowhere to run. That's the same exact question I've been asking for about, I think, over 10 years now. I'm curious, you know, why can't you, why can we keep such a big dog now in under Project Adore, which is a very good project, but you cannot keep a small little kitten? And that just doesn't make sense to me. The argument is that the, the cats can make caterwauling sounds, they can shed fur, and they can defecate in the public areas. But you know, all that applies to dogs as well. There are many pressing issues that we should address in Parliament and it really isn't a zero-sum game. It isn't either or. And that's why as, uh, in the last sitting, for example, as I raised the issue of secondhand smoke, I also raised the issue of Pate Liani about how we can help our foreign domestic workers. I also raised about how we can help uh, children who are differently abled. I also raised issues um, on arbitration in Singapore, on the housing and development rules, about helping doctors. So there is a wide variety of issues that we can speak up about and not just one. If there's one animal that resembles me the most, it will be a housefly. And I've always said that the, uh, the housefly is very persistent. Um, it lands, it wants to eat, you swipe. It flies away, it flies back again. It's non-stop. Until it gets what it wants, then it flies away. I guess I'm fortunate that when I was very young, I realised that helping animals was something that I, I really wanted to do. I wanted to grow up and be an animal activist. And the, when the opportunity came up for me to volunteer at the zoo, I, I took that up. And then an opening came up at the chimp section, where you could go and volunteer be, to be a chimp keeper. I got very close to this chim called Ramba, who was about a year old then. And Ramba, like all chim, loved to be tickled. I always remember she used to uh, sit down on my lap, uh, take my hand to put on her hips to tickle her. And unlike humans, chimps actually love to be tickled. And you tickle chimps, they actually laugh. And they, they really absolutely loved it. Ramba was also used for chim photography session, and I was actually the photographer. And whenever she misbehaved, the keepers used to grab her by her head and, and punch her in the face. And at one point, she was punched, she ran to me, she hugged me and she did this to check whether her lips were bleeding. And that really changed my life and that shaped the person that I am today. Um, I spoke up to urge the zoo to stop this practice of chimp photography. They, they fired me, took my badge, told me to leave and quite infamously they told me, Louis, you're just a small boy, you will never win. I believe I was 21 years old then. And I was a small boy, but I, I took up the cause to fight for Ramba, Poco and Gombe, the three chimps that were used for chimp photography. I approached the Straits Times. Somehow they believed in my story, they published it. I approached international groups to help me in the campaign and about two to three years later, we succeeded. And the zoo invited me back to witness the release of Ramba. Released because Ramba was taken away from her mother when she was about a year old. So for almost three years, never saw her mother, never touched her, maybe could hear her, could smell her. But I, I think to our amazement with the media there as well, when they opened the gates, uh, Ramba ran straight to Susie, her mother, and they hugged. And that was an amazing moment for me that they quite clearly missed each other. That even though they were separated at such a young age for so long, uh, they still obviously loved each other very much. So I've always shared this with the younger generation. If you're passionate about what you do, if you love what you do, you never work a day. And I live by that now. I make sure that I enjoy what I do as an activist. And now, similarly as a politician. I've enjoyed it. I've made the the journey a, a very positive one rather than filling it with negativity. I believe that we should be optimistic that change can happen and it will happen within our lifetime if we are passionate enough, if we persevere and are determined enough and if we are stubborn enough. I know sometimes they say stubborn is a negative word but I, I view it as very positive. If we stubbornly fight for what we believe in, nothing is impossible. As much as possible, I expose them to the work I do so that when they're young and growing up, they understand why daddy does this 
uh, why we need to make this world a better place for all. And uh, they got, come along with me to Acres. In fact, just over the weekend, I brought them to Acres to see all the rescued animals, uh, to share the stories of the turtles, of the monkey, of the civets that we have. And that really has had an impact. And it was this beautiful time. In fact, it was just last week when I was walking with them and Ella stopped and saw there was a caterpillar on the ground and she picked it up to put it at the side to try and rescue the fella. That's something I never thought her, huh? uh, but that really for me was so well, heartwarming. Yeah, that warm fuzzy feeling when I, I saw her do that, that whatever I thought her, whatever that she saw me doing had, had an impact in her life. Uh, my daughters, all three of them, Ella, Katie and Poppy, love unicorns. Um, obviously, they don't know that it's not real. So Ella, if you're watching this, I'm just lying. But unicorns are real and, and they're not mythical. And if there's one thing I wish to bring Ella to see and all three of them is to see unicorns. Just to confirm they are real. So I've been flooded with Pokemon over the last few months. I don't know why, but my daughters have uh, gone crazy over Pokemon. Uh, but if I can choose to be one Pokemon, it will be the Snorlax because I, I just lack sleep. I don't even know what sleep is anymore. If you look at the eye bags, they are almost permanent now. I think that the most important thing that I'm trying to do here in Nisun East is to make sure that this is not just a place that people live in, but a place where people can have fun at, where they can create beautiful memories, and a place that we can all call our home with a heart.